Hello and greetings. Welcome to session 77 of the Sphere of Power campaign based on the first edition Dungeons and Dragons Desert of Desolation module. Um, we've come quite a long way um, in the past 77 sessions. Um, we've certainly taken our time getting here, but it's been a fun ride so far. Um, just a brief summary from the DM's point of view. After getting teleported into the Desert of Desolation um, as a result of some stones that were found while cornered in the back of a troll cave, the party learned of a prophecy regarding an ancient Efreet Jinn, um, actually a member of the Fire Court who reported directly to the Fire Sultan himself. His name was Kalatarius, and about a thousand years ago, he wrecked quite a bit of havoc in this land, um, and in many cases, uh, the fact that this is a desert can be attributed to, um, to, to his devastation roughly a thousand years ago. Um, there are certainly other factors that have contributed to it, not the least of which was the loss of the River Athos, which your party um, magnificently restored and has earned the, uh, the gratitude um, of the, the desert peoples. And you've actually traveled, as you've traveled through the desert, you've seen the, the river restore itself to its original course. Um, and uh, you've actually begun to see the impact, uh, uh, the early impacts of that restoration. But that being said, going back again, about a thousand years ago, when uh, Kalatarius was uh, doing his wrath of destruction, there was a very, very par powerful ma mage named Martek that prophesied that a party of heroes would one day come forth and um, obtain his sphere of power to help him defeat once and for all the great Kalatarius. Unfortunately, a thousand years ago, even Martek was not powerful enough to defeat him and only could imprison him. And as part of your quest for the five star gems that he has left behind, uh, whether inadvertently or intentionally as part of Martek's grand plan, Kalatarius has been set free and has once again resumed his path of malice and hatred for the desert and the desert peoples. So, you have now recovered all five star gems that you know of. You have restored the River Athos after um, uh, freeing... Uh, the spirit and removing the curse of Amon Ra from his temple in the deep south. You have managed to, uh, you found the oasis of White Palm, where uh, you found a secret cult that had, was, was hoping to usurp the Sheik and his son, um, which also was tied to the, the grand prophecy because apparently Martek had even ensured that the prophecy would survive by putting a birthmark on the future wives of each of the, of the sons of the, the tribe that lived in the oasis. So as a result, each generation, a new woman would be born with this birthmark that the tribe heralded as the, the divine wife of the, the, the current son. And that legend has persisted for thousands of years. But as you discovered, not only was it a mark meant to signify the, the betrothed of the, the sheik, but it also contained some important clues that allowed you to find the star gem that also <clears throat> was imprisoning Kalatarius. So um, that actually was a third star gem. You found another, a second star gem deep in the runes of um, a obelisk that was dedicated to the god Set within the, the con confines of the oasis. So the fourth and fifth star gems you found in other places, one in an ancient city that was supposed to be some kind of resort and provided a whole bunch of interesting tricks, traps, and puzzles for you to get through. And finally, the last one was found in the tome of an ancient thief who presumably had stolen the star gem from someone else that Martek had intended. But after finding four of the star gems, you were directed to the cursed city of stone, where the fifth one was found on an island in the midst of a great sea of glass. And after paying your respects and honorary tributes to each of the gods of various pantheons, 
You eventually were confronted with the trials of Ra and managed to find your way to the fifth and last star gem. At which point you were able to trigger the last clue at the obelisk in the northern plaza, which told you to find the three crystal spires. And sure enough, on the northwestern shore of the glass sea, you now find yourself standing on a black hexagonal platform, um, which I will go over the description of in detail before we actually get back into uh, gameplay. But basically, you're now standing on this platform in, in front of three pillars, each with crystal pillars, each one with a different inscription on them, which uh, Haig has translated for us, and we will go over those. But um, that's where you are. You supposedly have now found um, your final destination and are seeking, hopefully, the final resolution and to grasp in your hands the sphere, Martek sphere of power. With that, and this is long overdue after three years, I'm not surprised if anyone who's actually listened through with this campaign this long wonders who is all playing. So we're going to do a quick review of the players. We're going to start with um, Kayla Lee, who is played by Alex. And um, rather than giving any player knowledge away, I will let her um, refresh um, her recollection of events so far. Go ahead, Alex. Are you there? Um, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I, I didn't give you a chance to prep for this. So. You did. I just didn't expect to go first. <laughs> well, it's alphabetical. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know right, me. Well, is anyone like else talking. ready to, to give their, their portrayal of events? Ms. You're, you're, Ms. You're our prime protagonist, and I still haven't heard you. you <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah I, I am here. Uh, the, 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 the weasel is in Alex Park here asleep, and the weasel don't remember anything. The weasel's <laughs> in the house. I, 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 I wish the weasel had better memory, but unfortunately, the weasel don't. I can go while others recollect. Go you for want? it, Demi. I, I, I was hoping that my recollection would try. <laughs> go, go for it, Dan. So one of my big things I would like to do, and, you know, maybe we go back uh, before we hit the big end of everything. I think there are details we need to find in some of those original songs they were singing in the desert bars in the beginning because they gave us a big idea of what the purpose is and there's been some twists and turns and so many details that it might benefit us to go back to some of those early chants and things that were going on but originally Miz and Redrith were looking at uh, uh, a prophecy and the brothers I'm uh, the Goliath brothers which I am one were hired technically as the muscle for the trip. Um, looking at the first original inscription and got sucked into this and uh, background of a little bit of the brothers. The uh, older brother, Varric, was kind of like the popular kid. Um, liked by the local uh, religious, I, I don't remember if he, what he, he's a paladin of, but um, by the religious groups and was raised in that. And I always wanted to be, but I had a big mouth and a bad, kind of a sour attitude. So I never had the charisma to, you know, get liked by the people I wanted to be liked by. So I kind of taught myself and learned some of the magic side of what my brother did through eldritch means and more runic powers. Um, that's kind of my character's history. I think that's what you were looking for, right? Did I kind of give a recap of who we were? I think that's a damn good start. Thank you very much. Yeah, and right now I think Alex and I have kind of worked together on a lot of the runic stuff, the inscriptions, the some of that kind of, uh, um, you know, puzzle 
puzzle fixing kind of things and yeah, yeah, I would say the two of you have been uh, pretty critical to filling the uh, the bardic role of the party since we don't actually have a bard. But uh, yeah, the two of you have pretty much been the masters of lore. Um, Ellie has been the one that has pretty much collected most of the important items along the way. Most particularly, I believe you have four of the five star gems. I think we gave um, the other one I, back after it fell out. But... I, I, I think I currently am holding all five. Okay. I can accept that. Yeah, and then other than that, I would say again that I think we might want to recap some of that old stuff because you have hinted a couple of times that you we're going to love the spin. And I think the more we recap and remember the stuff, the earlier stuff, the more we might enjoy the spin at the end. So that's just my guess. Well, Mizram was kind enough to actually post one of the old uh, songs that were sung many weeks ago in uh, back in Browazar when you first got in. Um, oh, no, no, wait a minute. Golden Palm. That Was that the one in Browazar or was that? Yeah, there are no inns in the Oasis, so that does go all the way back to uh, Browazar. All the way to the beginning. Yep. So, um, yeah, since he was kind enough to post it, I'm going to be happy to reiterate it. Legend of old, power have told of when land did cry. Pharaohs of old buried their gold hidden beneath the sky. A daughter of the lands with secret in hand, legend will not die. He to the past were made to last, despite the land turned dry. Hidden from sight, jewels of the night, fallen from on high, spread across the land like fingers in the hand. Together they scry, a means to open the way, come night or day, with them fate cannot deny. That's a cool one. So that's the, that's the talking of the finding of the gems. Mm -hmm. I know there was a, I remember back when we were dealing with the two different sects. Uh, I remember being fuzzy to who the bad guys were and the good guys were. And remembering at the time that I thought that was interesting and wondering if it was done on purpose. So that's always been in the back of my mind getting up to this point. But we'll see. Guest. Let's see. This might be a good refresher going back. So this is the letter that you originally found in the cave when you were cornered by the trolls and that brought you into this whole situation. And as you have since learned or figured out from the content of the letter itself, this was apparently a letter that Aman al raki the person you initially met when you came to Bralazar, had sent to Elminster, who needs no introduction, asking for his help in identifying and selecting a group of heroes to help with this prophecy. As you can tell, the letter never made it to Elminster, but wound up in your hands instead, begging the question of whether or not fate intervened or if this is all just some cruel trick of the godlings. But the letter went on to say as follows. Steamed Elminster, Sage of Shadowdale, High Wizard of Waterdeep. I hope this message finds you well. Too long it has been since our last meeting, but we both understand our studies leave little time for social endeavors. Yet I find myself once again in need of your assistance and foresight. After many years, my research has revealed the ancient mysteries of Martek, the great wizard who was known far and wide in these lands a millennia ago. I am convinced, now more than ever, that rumors of his legacy that persist to this day are indeed rooted in a prophecy that he foretold before his own demise. Based upon my recent discoveries, I am convinced that his prophecy was one, one of doom, and if it is to be held true, then it will be necessary to locate and retrieve his sphere of power with all haste, if the land is to be spared the devastation that he foresaw. It is for this reason that this message has found its way to you. 
and feel that no ordinary group of mercenaries would be able to complete this task. It will require a special combination of competence, dedication, and courage to see it through. Death will likely await all but the most cautious and humble of souls who embark on this quest. I feel I am woefully ill-equipped to identify any such individuals, but I believe your gifts are exceptionally well-suited for this purpose. To this end, I would beseech you to send forth a group of heroes whom you foresee are capable of such a deed. Along with this message, you should receive a set of teleportation cards, along with a separate scroll detailing their use, so that your delegates may be brought to me here in Bralazar. I humbly bestow my immeasurable gratitude in advance, mighty Elminster. Signed, Amun al -Rahi. Now, not that you really had a choice in the matter, but that was the information that preceded your kind of um, forced choice to use the teleportation stones or face the wrath of the, the home, homecoming trolls. So, um, I think that gives us a really good background of what's happened to date. Um, Alex or Jim, would you like to uh, do your part? I know I was leading the expedition uh, way back at the beginning. I don't remember where we were going at this point. Um, I do remember we've been uh, um, hunting, hunting down the the stones, but, and sorry, I just got disconnected a little while ago and just reconnected now. So I missed most of that That's recapping, no um, but I, I do a recording. You can always go back and watch. <laughs> right. <laughs> just need time. Um, um, so, but yeah, the, the part I'm still confused on is, is whether getting all the stones, if we need to use them as a weapon to defeat the, Mart is it Martek, um, or if we need to put them somewhere to defeat him? That's the part I'm not sure Mar about. Martek is the one who's guiding you through all of this in the past. Oh, okay. So it's the other guy. Yeah, it's Kalatari that you need yeah. to defeat. Yeah. And yeah, your, your understanding, and I think the prophecy has been pretty clear without me necessarily divulging anything, is, is that um, the, the way most of the information has come across to you is that the star gems are the key to obtaining the sphere of power, which is what will be used against Kalataris. So the the four five stones will help us get to the sphere of power. Or maybe they can combine and become the sphere of power. Uh, that's entirely possible. Prophecies have a way of uh, kind of, you know, shifting their meaning and whatnot. But um, after a millennia, it's entirely possible. That being said, there doesn't appear to be any obvious way that the uh, the piece the gems fit together. Okay. And they are also each one very, uh, very unique in um, in shape and color. However, they are all roughly fist sized stones that have a, a decent amount of weight to them. All right, and who was that that we lost Alex? No, Alex is on the phone. Is hey, who dropped out? That was me. Maybe. Zoom disconnected. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you got back up on the phone. Mm. All right. Well, you want to uh, throw in your uh, your two cents or maybe four cents, Kaylee? Um. Well. What do you, what do you still feel? Um, is left out or is still uh, poking at the back of your uh, your memory? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, Kaoli was originally hired as a guide for some mission that we have, we the players have long since forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, although for the characters, it has not been Oh, she's not having good luck today with her connection, is she? She gone. Yeah, that was her. That was I'm sure she recognized in a moment. Um, yeah, I, I, I do recall that way back when you were searching for a druid in the southern um, portions of the Sword Coast. 
And supposedly, Mizram was just to deliver a message of some kind, though you expected that it would lead to something more, perhaps a job. But um, it was en route to this destination um, for which you had hired guides because you knew this was a dangerous part of the Sword Coast at this time. Um, but that's when you got um, actually took refuge in the cave uh, because of a very violent storm um, up in the mountain pass. And when the, the trolls came home, you were kind of cornered in there and kind of left to, all right, well, we're trying to deliver this message, but um, it ain't going to do any good if we, if we all die in the back of a cave and become troll food. So um, certainly the importance of that quest has long since faded relative to uh, what you see or um, what you've been pulled into over here in um, uh, Roran. So anyway, uh, yeah, she tried again. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, I did a job of redoing the intros and where we are. Uh, but based on, Jim, what you were saying, um, presumably from Redreth's point of view, our, uh, our party wizard, uh, you feel that there's some loose hanging threads that you might want to address before you try to figure out these riddles or proceed forward. So that sounds like a discussion for the party. And Jim, you're on mute. Yeah, um, whether, so, yeah, just dis discussing what exactly are we trying to do? We're trying to find another location now. Um, are we trying to, because there was that one place where the, where the, where we're at, wasn't it? The spheres would actually uh, plug into the column well, I guess no, we're I past guess the, that the, point. Well, yeah, Hague. I guess. Okay, I guess. You know what? What are we? Well, Hague, might now might be a good time for you to um, introduce what you discovered on the uh, on the spires. So first, the tower we were trying to plug into, we were trying to figure out if it was all four uh, of the gems, or I think it just ended up being the the last gem we had found. Correct. That ended up creating. See, I'm trying to remember all the details. Okay, I, I can reread that last section. That technically is not that long ago. That should not be an issue. Uh, just give me a chance to pull it up. Not there, not there, not there. I'm just going to combine. No, that's Temple Boris. Riddle Hub list. There we go. All right. So. As a quick refresher, um, when you finished off the last area, you had discovered or decided that putting, you, know, you tried a couple of different combination of the various star gems. You had five, there were only four receptacles for them. Um, and after you obtained the last star gem, the star of Melos Pilar, uh, this obelisk started ringing, and you could hear it in the distance. I mean, you were a good, probably what quarter mile uh, away from the from the obelisk after you obtained the gem. Everything, you know, the magical effects that you were experiencing, all ceased, and then you started hearing this obelisk chiming in the distance. So you came up to it, you That's played around with the different combinations, and finally, when you placed just the last gem, the star of Melos Pilar, into the let's see. Uh, da -da. Okay, I guess it really didn't matter which of the four holes you put it into. As soon as you did, you heard, and oh God, she is definitely having issues. Right. So, as soon as you put the star gem into the obelisk, the timing stops, and you heard a soft but commandingly penetrating voice speak aloud, saying, The sphere of power retrieve. This, then, is destiny's decree. Doom and death with no reproof. This is the ancient prophecy. 
go ye to his mighty tomb. Where See ya! Shore and sky again. There sound the note, dispel the gloom, and bring the light to entrance gain. The star gem that was placed in the hollow flares into sudden brilliance, lit from within. The voice continues. The gem before you takes the power to light the way toward Martek's tower, where, if survive those here assembled, all shall see their finest hour. And the star gem, its light extinguished, falls onto the floor. And Haig, I do believe, was the one who connected the um, part about sky meeting shore and sky again to help you locate the three crystal spires or where you now stand. I do remember mentioning that, but don't remember it being confirmed. So thank you. Well, yeah, you, you looked at the shore and you found these three crystal spires and you can actually see two others in the distance, maybe about 10 miles away, one north, northeast, and the other one more east, northeast. Okay. And from the distance, they appear to be similar, but, um, you know, 10 miles, what did we say they were? How tall are they? I think they're like 60 feet tall, which really isn't that tall to be seen from a distance of 10 miles. Oh, they're only 30 foot tall. So, yeah, they're definitely... Um, you can just kind of see the tips gleaming in the moonlight. All right, so, Haig, you want to share the translations? Sure. Give me a sec. So depending on the position, if I remember them white right, one of them is fairly more important than the others. Um, let's see here. And for those of you who haven't noticed, all three of these are posted in the Ancient Inscriptions channel on Discord. So the first, the inscription in the Northern Crystal Spire is, My name is Martek, and rising here before you is the tomb of my body. Here shall my sphere of power be called forth in the, or I think it's supposed to be on, but I think I might have hit I instead of O. On the appointed day from beyond death and bring salvation to the desert peoples. The blue spire in the east says the mighty crystal spires rise around the entrance to my tomb. The bearers of the gems of stars must carry them to me and thereby gain their prize. And then the green spire to the west. <clears throat> says only once each day where the crystals sound will the way be made clear you have but to knock to enter and there were a couple of uh i don't know if you guys saw my i i went through them quick and posted them and then put, put spaces in the beginning and then worked on the other words and one of them was a pain in the butt but uh ended up getting them bearers looked like curers or something it was Couriers, I the b the first uh, yeah i was like it was like yeah and then i was like maybe it's couriers but it was a yeah well, that was a fun one to try to figure out and then you have the note in there saying the c and the b and i'm looking back at the two and all the difference is between the two letters is like the top tail yep is like shorter on one than it is on the other and i'm like come on that was so close <laughs> yeah oh yeah i still give you credit for it um, one minor other correction, which just to, to make it grammatically connect. Um, the, the third one, the green one, mm -hmm. only once each day when the crystals sound. When the crystals sound. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, the N and the R. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. They're very close to. Yeah, because it's entirely a phonetic language. Right. And the N looks like it uh, looks at, uh, more like my cursive R than the art yep so yeah, yeah it it's interesting how much cursive is in there you know for uh alex i wonder how much she notices it because i know her generation hasn't even been taught cursive yeah right 
my kids say they get a week and that's about it. No, no, no we, were, we were taught curses in school. Oh, okay, then oh. You, you, you're still on the, 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 the positive edge of that. Right. Yeah, we, we were we were taught curses in school. It, it was it's 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 my my sister's kids' generation that is not going. Oh, and there she goes again. Uh, I'm sorry, you're having such a bad time, Alex. It doesn't seem to be affecting her fantasy grounds, strangely enough. All right. No, it's the it's the Zoom app. There's there's bugs in the Zoom app. Really. Well, I did have to do a Zoom yep. update before I uh, before I uh, loaded it up or set the uh, the meeting today. So, hmm. all right. So yeah, I just um, I just updated my apps on my phones, and it's still not happy. Uh, well, we'll have to give Zoom a smacking around. All right. So I think we've got a pretty good background. We know where we all are standing on the platform in front of the three crystal spires, which Haig has translated for all of us. Um, Egg, you get another inspiration point for doing the translations. Um, but uh, as Jim pointed out, Redrath has some concerns about whether or not you guys have missed anything. So um, Mizram posted a few notes from the past. He filled in a few loopholes. And um, I think we're pretty much at a point where the party needs to decide, discuss and decide what they want to do next. Well, it says something well, he, about the sound, the crystals sounding. So I think we have to figure out if there's a combination between the gems and the crystals that have to do something. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I was going to say, and the the inscription that says, here's the tower. If we take the gems to Martex Tower, that's pretty much what we need to get the sphere, right? So... Right, right, but something with the crystals and the gems are going to lead the way, and it says it only happens at one point. So it's going to be kind of that Indiana Jones and the and Raiders where he puts that, you know, wand in the with the gem at the top of it, where it such the sun sun shines through and then highlights the town. You know, it's going to be one oh, of those yeah. situations, I think. Hey, insight check, please. Daniel's still there? Yep. Just had to run over to my PC and get oh, to okay. the tower. Yeah, you never know when you're going to have to roll the die. Right. All right. So you're listening to Red Dreth ask these questions. And you can't help but wonder if he's making this more complicated than necessary. You are drawn to the last line on the green pillar and feel inclined to point it out to Red. Okay, bear with me again. Mm -hmm. So the last line of the green pillar is you have but to knock to enter. So when we know where we are, all we have to do is knock on the door, and it'll let us in. So let's see. Purple pillar, northernmost pillar. Rising here is the tomb of my body. Here shall my sphere of power be called forth on the appointed day from beyond death and bring salvation. Second pillar to the east. The mighty crystal spires rise around the entrance to my tomb. So they're probably we could probably triangulate the entrance to his tomb. The bearers of the gems must carry them to me and thereby gain their prize. And then thirdly, only once each day where the crystals sound will the way be made clear. When the crystals sound. Or when the crystals sound. So we have to make the crystal sound, maybe triangulate the position. or search somehow for in the area to find where the entrance of the tomb is. And then once it's once the 
Only once each day when the crystals sound will they be will the way be made clear. So we got to figure out the sounding of the crystals puzzle. That makes it sound like we need to hang around and because it sounds like like it's only going to happen once per day. Right. Not like we can make it, but it's like it's just going to happen and we have to be around for it. But we have to be around. Oh, you, you, you think we might not have to do the crystal sounding? It's just going to happen. So we'll be there. The crystals will sound and the way will be made clear. That That's that's the way it reads to me anyways so okay <clears throat> so yeah i guess it's not a step-by-step -step instruction guide so i get i do have a bias in that i know how it works yeah it's depending on the order but they do say they surround the spires surround his entrance So depending on, that's north. There's no linear, I mean, the overland map does not depict any sort of linear direction where if sun hit, it could go through the crystals, but everything here is sun. Crystals are crystals. It's Even probably- are, It is nighttime. You are basing this on moonlight at the moment. True, but crystals crystals are meant to reflect refract sunlight, so that probably has something to do with it. You know, the best we could do, what do we do? We, we lose a day sitting and seeing if we have any sort of reaction by the crystals to, to the sunlight. I, I should remind you that you let the camels go. You no longer have the camels with you. We do have his tent for protection against the sun's rays. And though the river offers a good route, um, I don't think you have any real means of being able to sail up river at this point. Anybody else got thoughts? Miss? Uh, I, I, I think everything you said is uh, pretty much correct. Uh, from what I've been following uh, with everything uh, will be going on, I ain't got much to add, really. Apart from you just hear the weasel snoozing in uh, Kaoli pocket. So where do you think we set up shop, Jim? Where are the three? Is it the three crystals? Three crystals, and they're roughly 10 miles apart. There are three sets of three. Did we figure out how many crystals there are? There oh, are three there are sets three of three. Three sets of three. Okay. Yeah. So I missed you, that detail. Yeah. So, yeah, there are three spires on the platform you are on right now. And then there is another set of three that appear, you know, as best as you can tell, you know, depending on you, you look at the angle, watch the, the moon refract against it. And you're pretty sure that depending on your literally a slight change of angle, sometimes you see a purple reflection, sometimes you see a green one, and sometimes you see a blue one, which seems to match the colors of the ones of the three pillars that you have there. So as far as you can tell, each one of the other two locations that are depicted on the map are replicas of the three spot 30 foot tall spires that you are standing next to upon a hexagonal platform obviously you can't tell if they're on a platform but you believe you can at least see the very tips of three different colored crystals in each of those two locations i want to inspect the crystals more i want to see if there's any indentations if there's any uh markings 
anything that I can glean? Are they tipped towards each other to hold something at the peak? Uh, anything like that? All right. So to reread it or to reshare the description, they are three 30 foot tall crystal spires towering above a 10 foot wide hexagonal base of polished black stone. Spires, which show no marks from time and weather, stand at the points of the hexagon, one to the north, one to the east, and one to the west. Inscriptions in the ancient alphabet have been carved into the spires. Two forked prongs spread from the top of each crystal like the wings of a mighty phoenix. In the center of the platform, there is a circle of gray. Okay. So, so we need I, the we need the sun to hit them in a certain way, right? But they're thirty feet up, so we need Alex to fly. So the prongs will the do the prongs seem to look like they would hold a gem? No. Hmm. Because I was so thinking if the, Go ahead. I was. I was thinking, my thought was, if each one held a gem, it would be gem, gem, gem in the pillars, one in the center, in the whatever indentation is in the center, and then us as a person holding the last. But that's moot. So we really need to camp out by one and see a day go by um, to see if something special happens at a certain time of day when the lights hit them. I mean, is it every day at, I don't know, like 6 p.m., um, the light hits the pillar just right and it shoots off a beam in some direction? Because oh. we just basically... Because then we'd basically need to triangulate all three groups of crystals where the beam shoots off to, right? Maybe, maybe, but they're prongs. They're tuning forks. So they'll make are they, noise. Are they tuning forks? Uh, can we pretend we ask Alex to fly up and flick one? If she can't hear yeah. us. There you are. Hey, yeah, you want to fly up and flick one? <laughs> He kind of gives you this, like, this look, like, you want me to do what again? And then she goes up and attempts to do what you asked. Come on, fingers crossed, guys. All right, so, Kayla Lee, describe for me what you're going to do then, or what you think it is they want you to do. Um, I'm going to fly up. To one of these, to the top of one of these crystal formations, and um. Anyone in particular? Um. Mm, I don't know. Um. The north one. And attempt to see if I can get it to sound like a tuning fork. Okay. And what are you hitting it with, and how hard are you hitting it? Oh boy, we're gonna break it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's exactly um, what I was thinking. Yep, okay, very good. 
Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Um, let's start with. Uh, nothing that says you have to start with a baseball bat. Yeah, sure. let's start with. Here, take this okay. war hammer. It's got a very light touch. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to start with an arrow and just kind of a light smack. Um, not like hard enough to like risk breaking things, but but you know but not not like so light that I'm barely touching it either. Um don't know exactly how to describe it. Kind of just I'm not trying to hurt it. I'm just trying to see if I can um but but you're using your yeah, arrow. I, you're using your arrow to hit it, correct? Yeah. Okay. Probably aiming to touch the wood to the crystal first rather than the metal tip. Now, I could just presume that given that it's not moving and your advanced level of expertise, that you should have no problem doing so. However, I feel obliged as a DM to still ask you to roll just to make sure we don't have a situational comedy when you roll a one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, let me find... Um... No problem. Confidently, she knocks okay. her arrow, pulls back on the uh, drawstring, releases it with casual elegance, and as the arrow bounces lightly off of the spire, you hear a ding. Okay. Uh, Not the resonant. Like a, like a. We were hoping for. Yeah, that's my question. I hear a ding. Is the ding like a frying pan hitting the floor kind of ding, or is it definitely a tone? It's. Is it musical in, in nature? It's definitely a tone, but it's not a sustained tone. Mm. Not unlike the sound of tapping a wine glass while you're still holding the bait, the the bowl as opposed to the stem. Mm. Which tells me that either this is not how we're supposed to get them to sound, or we have not yet met all the correct conditions for it to sound because it, it, yeah, it's I think not I... the system. Is it the Not wrong what time? looking for. Yeah, wrong time of day. This is it the wrong time of day? Uh, or am I totally wrong? And Keith's giving it us some not, theater. It might not be that it's a specific time <clears throat> of day. It might be that, um, you know, who knows? Maybe we have to make them all sound at once. Yeah, but 10 miles apart for each spire? How are we going to make that you know, well, I guess magic is magic, but it's going to be a long, hot trek if we do it during the day. Oh, man. We need some instant communication type thing so we can uh, put people at each spire and see what happens. Right. Yeah, I don't even know no, how we would do that. You don't need instant communication. You just need precise coordination. Yeah, I'm I'm a wizard. Coordination maybe is not my strong suit. Hello. <laughs> yes. With a twenty-six on your insight roll, you decide to try again, pulling back the bow. Damn, that's really noisy. Whatever you're doing, not buddy. eating your and, and and you're you're not close enough to your mic. I can't quite Sorry, hear you. I said, with a twenty-six on your insight score. <clears throat> You decide to try it once more, pulling back a little further on your drawstring. Okay. Uh, let me rephrase that. 
you decide it might be worthwhile to do so. I'm not going to tell you what you're doing. Okay. And hey, Dan, I'm about to drive by your place again. Got the wrong size, got to run back. So. Hey. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, let's try again. There we go. I waved as I went by, Dan. I saw you and I waved back. So, once again, another graceful fire by um, Kaylee. As a matter of fact, so smooth and simple, no one even notices that she's getting ready to do so until she now, uses the arrow. I, I have one qu one question on that. Are you shooting at it, or were you going up with an arrow and your flying shoes and just tapping it? Well, my original vision had been to just um, smack it like. Um, just to swing the arrow like a baseball bat, but the way uh, Keith has been describing it, um, I've been shooting at it. And honestly, I don't really care. <laughs> I actually like the shooting at it too. <laughs> I know my misinterpretation, like, hey, but yeah, it's fine that we can stick with, with that. Um, I figure since you usually do not like to commit to touching anything, um, shooting something at range made a little bit more sense to me. Good call. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Honestly, Just wanted to clarify. I, I mean, it. it no, I'm not particular. It, it it works either way. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, from my standpoint, it really is not going to have any impact on the, the, the progression of events. So what right. you do discover is, is that by adding a little more force to your arrow, the sound mm -hmm. is a bit louder and lasts a bit longer. Ooh, yes. All right, we need more sustain. I cast fireball. <laughs> So, or is that maybe not the right answer? That's probably not the right answer, dude. As the crystals are all melted. <laughs> Holy crap. I just realized something scary from a DM what? point of view. Out of the, the six of you? Mm-hmm. Redrath has the lowest wisdom at a 12. <laughs> You're all a bunch of wise motherfuckers. <laughs> or just a bunch of wise asses. One of the I, my, my, the, 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 wiz, the wizard is smart, but not necessarily wise. <laughs> yeah, but even at 12, that being the lowest one for the entire party, geez. I mean, and you, then you compare it to the charisma scores, where you guys share an eight, a six, a nine, and a seven. <laughs> Guess which that one we like? Right. For a dumb stat. Rude, ugly, and grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But you know the well, ways of the world. Well, I mean, the druid says it all when he lives in animal form all the time. <laughs> I ain't dealing people with people skills out the window. Excuse me, I ain't dealing with these humanoids. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. I am going to take a little bit of DM right here. And I could be wrong, but the Callias tend to strike me as being somewhat impetuous at times. Am I wrong about that? Impetuous? Like, just get out. Like, I guess to find yeah. impetuous. Make, Not make, the Nike make logo. Make just do. It. Yes. Make, yes. Make, yes. One hundred percent. That is that is definitely me, and uh, defines my charisma score a little. Yes, indeed. Um. Ah. Uh, yeah, no, I can't. If Matt was so, here and Dan was not, I would feel comfortable with Hague scores doing this action, but I'm not going to have Varric do it. Not as a paladin. Paladins um, are, in, by nature, usually too damn cautious until they're staring evil in the face. So let me just look at Kaelali, and if it was only a little bit this time, I'll say, hit it harder. 
How's that? <laughs> Get that sucker to ring. <laughs> like she's banging on a drum. No, play it. Kale, we will consider this for a moment and shrug and then try again. <laughs> All right, so given that we have decided that we are launching arrows at it, so we're doing a full draw on the... Uh... This time, this time, and I'm going to speak for Matt. This time, I'm going to have Matt go over with his hammer and not try to break the crystal, but try to hit the, another a different crystal in a way where... Uh, it's kind of a flat hit against the crystal and see if he can get his fork to resonate. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to double, double hand pound the third crystal at the same time. Like with the flat of, you know, the blade or whatever. Right. How's that? That I didn't think about. We're only playing one. Maybe we got to play all three at the same time. All right. So you or um, your brother? Uh, my brother on one, me on a different one. So Kaylee's going with the bow. Matt's going to take Warhammer and smack at one, uh, one and I'm going to double hand pound on the third. I'm going to hammer fist, double hammer fist on the third. And see if we can get it at the same time and generate the tones at the same time. Okay. Um... I'll spare the rolls at this point because they're not moving. Okay. And it'd be bad enough if Kaylee missed a point blank shot with a ranged weapon, but if you guys actually fumble on a, a, a grapple against a non moving solid object, you don't belong. <laughs> I right. do kind of like the vision of him having one hand resting against the pillar and swinging with the other one and still missing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I seem to remember some donkeys in the water, but I digress. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, Kaylee, you are increasing the force of your shot when you let loose the mm -hmm. arrow. Mm -hmm. And Varric is sitting there with the edge of his one of his war hammers. And we're going to say he's going up against the, the blue one. Um, sure. Kale, you're at the red one. Or the, sorry, the purple one. And Hag, you're at the emerald one. Very good. And so Varric hits with a good firm strike using the, the side of his uh, of his warhammer. And Hag, at the same time, is just basically pounding on it with his fists. We'll give it a little bit of a timpani roll with my fist. Do, 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 do. <laughs> See if I can get some vibration going. So Kaylee gets, an, as expected, a yet even louder sound that lasts somewhat longer, but doesn't really sustain. Haig can kind of feel the vibrations building up in it, but isn't quite getting the same kind of sound. It definitely seems muted. However, Varric, by using the, what's the term I'm looking for, um, slightly shielded hard surface, gets a clear tone. And that tone sustains for a good two, three seconds. And so Varric decides, okay, I'm going to hit this thing harder. And he puts some force into it. This time, the crystal starts sounding and building in volume. It continues to ring louder and louder. And as it continues to grow in sound, just the one crystal that he hit, the blue one, the air starts to shimmer around you. Suddenly, overhead, the sky itself ripples in waves of clear light and then opens up revealing an immense crystal citadel floating 500 feet in the air. The structure, Booyah! which is perhaps six miles wide at the base, has six elegant minaret towers, 
It appears that the legendary tomb of Martek was here in the open all these centuries. A pillar of light suddenly comes down from the building and covers the gray marble part of the platform. Oh, let's go. Uh, yeah. Well, the platform we're on is only 10 feet. This, this citadel is in the sky, you said, and it's being held up by pillars? The sky ripples in waves of clear light and then opens up, revealing an immense crystal citadel floating 500 feet in the air. The structure, oh. which is perhaps six miles wide at the base, has six elegant minaret towers. Okay. Let's go. Hustle, hustle. It's, it's a castle in the sky, unsupported by anything. But there's a pillar of light, guys, shining on something at our feet on the mm -hmm. in the base of the in the base of the center of the platform we're on. So we need to go to the center of the platform, right? It's only yep. a 10 foot platform. So we're all pretty much staring at please? it at our feet. Squish together. We can squish. I mean, I You're can- You're gonna try I to all enter in I at can, once? I can fly if necessary. And the weasel is probably in my pocket already. And- <laughs> Oh, so that well, leaves the, the four of you. Since, oh, the since context the, potential there, Kaylee. So since you think the that the p pillar of light is a teleporter? Something. Since the since the wizard wasn't hitting one of the crystals, he would have probably moved right to the center when he saw the light there. All right, so we're going to presume that Redreth is actually the first one to step into the light. And as he does so, the rest of you see him, after a brief pause, begin to rise up into the light. Redreth, for your part, as you begin to feel this sense of lightness and being pulled upward, everything gets very, very bright to you. To the point that you really can't see anything except for just vague shadows of your companions standing around. Are the rest of you entering? One. Yep. Yeah. Three. Four. Five. All right. We're going to presume those that are not here are following in suit. And as each of you enter into the light, you experience the same sensation. Everything goes bright to the point where you eventually cannot see anything. And everything becomes quite blinded until you find yourself elsewhere. You are now, each one of you, on a hexagonal platform, nearly 600 feet wide. Ooh. Six white marble pillars rise high overhead toward an opalescent dome. Hanging from the pillars, a gigantic gong gives forth a loud bong, echoing across the area. Across the clearing in front of this area, jungle growth blocks the site, but the dome ceiling continues as far as you can see. 200 feet of stairs lead up to this platform from the ground. Beside them, rivers empty into the wall. So... What we're going to do here Hold on a second. unfortunately i am still working on this map so i do not have a final version to stick into fantasy grounds at this moment but just so that you have an appreciation of what we're looking at, I'm going to go ahead and put a sample of it in the campaign play section of Discord. And what I will point out, and let's see, is there any way I can move this over to... I don't think I can get it onto uh, the fantasy grounds or the Zoom screen at the moment. So, um, actually, you know what I can do? I can take over the screen sharing for a moment. Okay. 
All right. So, if you have Discord, have it open in Discord, you can see it a little bit better. But so you can see where I'm pointing at and whatnot. Um, go ahead and look at the, the shared screen. Um, so you're on this hexagonal platform. You can see the pillars around there. You can see how the steps lead down. Keep in mind the scale of this is very large. The hexes are 200 feet per side. Now, the wall to the left and right actually represents the boundary of this area. This lower section of green here is not present. You do not see it. It is a solid wall. The circular area at, on each side of that wall is also contained in the wall. So this thing forms a giant dome structure. I still need to clear out this area here because there is basically nothing behind this wall to the east and west. And the wall hugs the south, southeast, and southwest portions of the platform. So it's a half hex with stairs, and the back side of the hex is a, is a wall. Correct. And the wall is a it's not a vertical wall, but a dome curving upwards. Gotcha. And as they described it, it's an opalescent dome, so it reflects light in its own manner. And of course, well, I don't have it showing there, but basically between the two southernmost pillars is the gong that I mentioned that, let's see, is it one? Oh, okay, so let's see. Red dress, you would not have noticed it yourself. And depending on the order that everyone else came in, it would not have been noticeable. And probably at first you didn't pick up on it, Red dress. But so, you know, you came in and, and basically this is what you're deducing, but to, to provide a description and so that you can kind of figure out what, what happened or what's going on. So you came in, the bong did sound, but you didn't hear it. As the next person came in and you're just kind of getting your vision back at this point and you see someone show up, the bong goes off again. By the time the third person shows up, you're able to see clear enough to see that the bong goes off just as the third person appears. And the same is true for the next three people that show up. For the last person that steps through, they don't even hear the bong. So the second to last person only hears the bong once, they may or may not draw a conclusion. But for at least Red Dress and the next two people beyond it, it's kind of obvious that the bong only sounds when someone enters the platform. Does it make a single sound or a double sound when um, Ms. Rim and I appear? Because he's in my pocket. Good question. <laughs> I would say that you only hear one sound. Okay. And it could be because you were both considered to have entered simultaneously, so they went off at the same time. Okay. Or the ferrets incinerated. Yeah, you might want to check your pocket. <laughs> oh, bad news, Kayla. You just have a bunch of uh, fur in your pocket. Not much else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miz is still there in his weasel form. Kind of wondering yeah. what the fuck's going on. It got awfully bright out there. Yeah, I'd have to say, actually, even though you were in her pocket, the, the brightness of the light during the transition was still bright enough to blind you as well, Ms. Rum. You, you just see me slowly poke my head out and looking around angry, going, who turned on that goddamn light? Now, I want to remind you, you have spent, what, about six, ten days or six weeks in the um, Forgotten Realm calendar? running through desert, baking in the hot desert sun, rationing water because it has been so scarce. You are now sitting on a plat marble platform 200 feet above a lush jungle with two river waterways running past you. And they have one on the map, but there's a second one on the other side of the platform that also goes off to the north. So... You're, you're kind of in paradise at the moment. It looks like paradise. I mean, you're still suspicious. You don't have this overwhelming feeling of, oh, yeah, I just landed in the blessed realm or anything like that. 
but this place looks gorgeous. This reminds you of greenery and and um, uh, and life in a way that you guys have not felt in months at this point. Um, so th there's mm -hmm. a lot of elation, you know, regardless of whether or not spiritually or you know, in terms of your current situation, whether or not you feel comfortable. This looks like a really nice place. So you're like, hey, you know what? We can kick it for a little while, except for that gong going off. You're kind of worried about that. Because at least one of you are figuring out, hey, if there's anyone else here, they know we are too. Yep. So with that, guys, we're going to take our 15-minute break. And um, Albie has apologized. He was moving a chicken coop this weekend. So I'm hoping he's going to be, well, actually, let me double check. Two weeks from now is actually Thanksgiving weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right. So I guess vote now. Are we, do we want to postpone um, the 25th? I'm good to play. I was going to say, I'm good to play. I'm fine. Awesome. Yeah, Saturday after should be fine for me. Awesome. That's good to hear. Because, yeah, I really don't want to skip one. And I'm hoping Albie's missed the last three. So I'm hoping we can get him in um, again, especially as we're, we're coming down to this point. All right, cool. So, um, you know, I'll probably repost something in Discord, but we'll, we'll tentatively plan that we will have another session in two weeks. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and we are going to take a break. And we should be back here shortly. Uh, okay. Very good. All right, so we've had a couple of real life issues pop up during the break, which um, is not unusual, especially for this uh, cast of characters. So we're going to call today's session at this point and resume um, session 78 um, in the Garden of the Cursed, um, which is the, the next area that they have just entered after figuring out the riddle of the Crystal Spires. So thanks for everyone who's been watching, and um, we'll see you in two weeks or the next episode, whichever comes first.